This is so cool. <sighs> yeah, I guess. Too bad it's homework. I'd rather just enjoy it and not have to take a ton of notes about it. Come on, Leo. Watching a lunar eclipse and recording what happens is a great idea. It's way better than my homework. Are you even looking? Whoa! Isn't it beautiful? I thought the moon would be dark inside the Earth's shadow, but it's all red. I know! Mars must be close by. The red planet, filled with creepy-looking Martians. Mars? Are you sure? Uh, yeah. Once in a while, Mars comes by and makes the moon look red and angry. My friends were talking about it at lunch today. That doesn't sound right. We should investigate ourselves. Investigate? Sounds like more homework. Count me out. Are you sure? I mean, I could go back in time and talk to a famous astronomer all by myself. You know what? I'll come along. After all, every investigation needs a space expert. <laughs> Have it your way. Wow, this place looks so cool. Look at that cathedral right over there. We must be in Europe hundreds of years ago. Good gracious! Who are you? And what are you doing in my observatory? My name's Layla, and this is my brother Leo. We just arrived here from... Outer space! Take us to your leader. Leo, cut it out. We're from the future, but we're looking for some info about outer space. Judging by all these sketches of the solar system, I'm guessing you're an astronomer? Why, yes. Nicholas Copernicus, at your service. Copernicus? I learned about you in history class. Didn't you help everyone understand how the solar system works? Well, I haven't convinced everyone, but I'm working on that. You see, my duties in town and at the cathedral take up most of my day, so I've been working here in this observatory at night. For years, I've been studying the night sky, recording what I see and perfecting my theory, a heliocentric model of our solar system. Heliocentric? What's that? I mean that every planet, including our own, orbits the sun. Helio, meaning sun, and centric, meaning center. That's a great theory, Mr. Copernicus. Stick with it. Trust me. Yes, of course. I daren't question the future children. Right. Anyway, Mr. Copernicus, we need your help. We just watched the moon turn red during a lunar eclipse. Splendid. A rare and divine sight. It was amazing. But we're not sure why it happened. My brother heard from his classmates that it's because Mars is nearby, but I don't buy that, and I'm not sure where to start. Hey, can you tell us how your theory about planets orbiting the sun first started? Why, of course. I've spent an entire lifetime developing it. As a young man, I was an assistant to a great astronomer in Italy. This allowed me to study with the best astronomers and compare what they thought to my own observations. But let me start at the beginning. You mean when God created the universe? Oh, <laughs> not that beginning. I'll put it this way. On certain nights, it looks like some stars are brighter than normal. Look closely, and you'll see that they're actually planets. Over months and years, the planets make different patterns across the sky. Over a thousand years ago, a mathematician named Ptolemy saw these patterns and had an idea. Mars, Venus, Jupiter, the stars, and even our sun are moving in circles around the Earth. To this day, people in Europe believe this geocentric or Earth-centered theory. But if you ask me, it's incorrect. Hmm, what made you think that? Well, to test Ptolemy's theory, I asked, what if it was true? If the Earth is the fixed center of our universe, and if everything else circles around it, what does that tell us about what we see at night? That would mean Earth is pretty important, right? Certainly. That's why many people are afraid to imagine the universe in a different way. But if Earth is its center, then many other things don't make sense. Like what? Why, the stars. They're much farther away than the planets. And if they're circling us too, they have to be moving incredibly fast. The farther away, the faster they must be moving. I've seen a shooting star before, but that sounds like a shooting universe. Yeah, our sun is a star, and it's not moving around some small planet. That's correct. A better explanation is that the stars are fixed, and our planet is rotating on its axis. And that was just one problem. Another is that sometimes the planets change direction in the night sky. They change direction? 
How is that possible? It isn't, but that's what it looks like. Night after night, they're going one way, but then for a few nights, they go the other way. That's why ancient astronomers called the planets wanderers. Actually, the word planet in Greek means wanderer. They were very observant, but their model of planets revolving around Earth in a perfect circle falls short of an explanation. Sounds like another puzzle for your new theory to solve. No doubt, and I struggled with this one for many years. What could possibly explain it? But then I thought, perhaps every planet, including ours, is moving around the Sun, just not at the same speed. Because we're moving faster than Mars, we pass it every few years, and for a little while, Mars looks like it's changing direction. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I certainly think so. My heliocentric model does a much better job explaining what we see night after night. That's why I've written a short book about it, my little commentary. Very impressive. You've put a lot of work into developing your theory. Do you think it will change how people see the universe? I hope so, Layla. A true and accurate model of the universe will help us see God's mighty works in a greater way. I'm not sure how popular my ideas will be, or if anyone aside from my stargazing friends will accept them. Wait, you mean you've done all this work and people might not even believe you? That's a bummer. All in good time, Leo. And it's a good reminder that ideas aren't correct simply because everyone believes them. Do your own research, test your own theories, and let evidence, not popularity, determine the truth. I will, Mr. Copernicus. All right, Mr. Space Expert. What do you think about the Red Moon now? Hmm, I think I need to test the theory I heard from my friends. I mean, if Mars turns the moon red, then Mars would have to be really close by. Very interesting. But, sounds like you're on the right track to figuring it out. Thanks! Now that I'm curious, I should probably head home. I've got a red moon mystery to solve! Of course! Farewell! Godspeed! Goodbye! Thanks! I did it, Layla! I found out why the moon turned red! It's incredible! Amazing! Stupendous! <laughs> Slow down, Leo! Tell me what happened! First, I looked at a calendar of where the planets are. The moon's not that far from us, but we're not even close to Mars right now. So it can't be Mars turning the moon red. Exactly! My friends at school are wrong because right now, Mars is on the other side of the solar system. So it had to be something else making the moon red. What did you find? Light from the sun! Sunlight? But during a lunar eclipse, our planet blocks the sun's light from reaching the moon. It turns out, not all of it. Some light still reaches the moon around the edges of Earth. As the light passes through the Earth's atmosphere, it gets bent. The red wavelengths of light are less affected than the others, and that's what makes it red. It's kind of like the light we see during a sunset, and it covers the part of the moon that's facing us. Well done, Leo. Looks like curiosity and a little hard work paid off. Well, that's nothing. Just another day in the life of a space expert. If you like time traveling with Leo and Layla, watch more of their adventures at PragerUKids.com. And parents, don't forget to subscribe.